Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Monday, August 21st, and we are here answering financial questions that you may have. Now, I know it is deep into August. I know that many of you are taking some well-deserved time off, but as we've said over the course of the last few weeks, sometimes when you have a break, it allows you the opportunity to let things bubble up to the surface. And maybe one of those things is how you're going to make a big change in your life. Maybe it's just how to make a small change. Maybe there's something else going on that touches your financial life. If you need some assistance, just give us a shout. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. Do let us know if you would like to join us on the air. Now, while you are on the website, don't forget there's lots of stuff to do. You can sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Love that. You can buy the book, The Great Money Reset, which will help you get that guide towards changing your life without blowing up your financial life. Okay. That's a good thing. Uh, And we've got lots of great ideas to help turn some of the chaos in your life into opportunity. You can also subscribe to our new service. Not so new. I guess Mark at some point I have to stop saying new. I'm going to still say new. Jill on Money Live is our subscription service and it's amazing because it allows you to join us for live webinars and those webinars take place quarterly. So for 35 bucks, you get a live webinar experience. Then you also get special bonus content, which we put up behind the paywall. All of that for the low price of $35 for a whole year. Next up on the webinar series is Nate Burleson. He's the co-anchor of CBS Mornings and the studio analyst for CBS, the NFL Today Show. He's a former professional football football player. We're talking about sports and money, and he is the expert on that. If you'd like to join us, remember, just join us by clicking on Jill on Money Live and subscribe to the service. Okay, let's get to you. We have someone on the line. It is Lynn, who's up from Maryland. Hello, Lynn. You are next. Hi, Jill and Mark. How's it going? What's going on? How can we help you? Well, I'm kind of looking at our finances and we're getting closer to retirement and I'm feeling like we might not have enough, but my husband's of the other view that we're better than 80% of the population, so we should be fine. (laughs) Wait a second. I never like the comparison thing. I always feel much more comfortable saying like, are we ready to retire based on what we are trying to do. You know what I mean? Because then it doesn't have anything to do with anyone else but you guys. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on for you? Well, my husband just took a new job with a nonprofit. Congratulations. uh, It's a great job. It's a great company, but it takes a huge bite out of our income because our insurance is really high with it. Hmm. We're not able to put as much money away now as we were able to before. So it's a little worrisome. Okay. Well, how much is he earning in the new job? One fifty before the health care comes out. Okay. Are you working as well, Lynn? I work part time as a teacher. Mm-hmm. How much do you earn as a part time teacher? Between twenty and thirty thousand a year. Are you also receiving a pension from a full time teaching gig? I'm not. We made that choice years ago to stay home and take care of the kids. Didn't really realize back then we weren't very financially savvy that we were giving up a pension to do so. You are where you are, right? How old are you, Lynn? I'm 58. And your husband? Is 55. How much was he earning before this job? Was he working? And I presume it was, is it a nonprofit? Was he at a nonprofit or was he at a private for-profit company? No, he was at a for-profit corporate. He was a high income earner. And what was that? How much was he making? Well, his base salary was 170, but it went anywhere from 170 to 400, depending on stock. What happened? Did he burn out? Did he get like, I'm done? What he happened? Did. He was yeah. there for a long time and he left at a good time. He left of his own accord during one of their layoffs. He raised his hand. So we got a great okay. severance package. All right. That's not bad. No. So on the 150 that he is earning right now, so he, he pays for health care. I'm surprised because usually nonprofits have like low salary, but good benefits. But the health care, is, is it just his con- contribution is a bigger piece than you're used to? It's all. Oh, he's only covered. Um, myself and our kids were not covered. We had to pay the full. So our health care oh. that comes out of that is $15,000 a year. Yowza. Okay. And then what about for his um, retirement contributions? Is he making any at this point or not? 
It's a very minimal. Right now we're doing about 4% and they do not match. They won't match for two years. Tell me about how much you guys have saved and put aside just so we can then figure out kind of where you stand right now. So from his big time corporate career, what's out there in terms of retirement savings? So combined, we have 418000 in a pre-tax 401k, mm-hmm. 20000 in a Roth 403b, 20000 in Roth IRAs, um, 75000 in pre-tax IRAs. So that's retirement. Right now, that Roth 403b, is that what he's putting money into right now? or That's, that's mine with the school system. Okay. So that's Lynn. Got it. And he's Uh, now opened a Roth 403B that he's starting to contribute to. But again, it's pretty minimal. Okay, that's fine. How about money in the bank? You have some money saved up? I am. And I know you don't yell at people, but we have 346,000 in cash and CDs. I thought you were about to cry when you said that, but you were really kind of giggling. Um, Okay, so 346 in cash. I'm not yelling at you. I'm fine. I'm good. What about brokerage accounts? Do you have a brokerage account? We do not. We just learned about those from listening to you in the last year or two. Didn't even know they, they really existed. Oh, I'm so glad that you were able to join us on this journey. You mentioned some kids. How old are they? One is out of college, two are in college. Okay, so what do we have, like 20? Give me the just the ages. Uh, 22, 20, and 19. How are you paying for college? So we had 529s to help them with, and we had a couple CDs. So 529s covered about two years, and then Uh we have some CDs, and they do. Two of the three have a few small loans. But not bad. Like you're not freaked out about the two other ones that are the kids that are left in school, right? We don't, no. In other words, I guess I'm wondering, is any of the cash allocated for the kids? Nope. I okay. did not include any of their money. Okay, good. Um, 22-year-old is launched or are you supporting? She is launched. She graduated, okay. got a job right away and has her own apartment now. Yes. You have now achieved some real success, Lynn. Um, okay. What else do I need to know about? How about a house? Do you guys own a home? We do have a house. We have a primary home that's worth about six hundred thousand. Oh. And we have a vacation home that's worth about four hundred thousand. Uh are both of them paid for or do you have mortgages outstanding on one or the other? No mortgages. Hmm. Okay. So we know where your house where your money is gone, paying all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. All right. Magic question. He's fifty five. You've got the 150 plus, you know, you're 20 or 30. So let's call it 170. Let's call it 175 total. But, you know, I know the healthcare stuff. But are you guys able to float your expenses on the 175 combined? We do. We're fine with that. In fact, I'm looking at the numbers and we can probably put away another 20,000 a year. So if that's the case, that's interesting. I'm just thinking about, you know, like what you really spend. What do you think? I mean, I know this is weird, but like, what do you think you're really spending on a monthly basis? And I don't want you to make it zero, like, oh, I want so tight. But like, like when you look at your money that you're spending and some vacations and the stuff, what do you think you're spending on a monthly or an annual basis? Monthly right now is about 6,500. That's it? Yep. That's everything? Yep. That's great. So uh, what's the game plan? How long is hubby going to work? So hoping about seven more years. Mm -hmm. So he'll be 62, but we're going to try to put money away so that we can float three more years before we start taking any Social Security. If you look at his, since you're saying work for seven years, uh, so 62, we need to get him to 67, right? That's the magic number. Do you happen to know what your Social Security benefit is at your full retirement ages? I do. His is 3,651. 3,651. That's him. Yep. Right now, mine's 1,440, but mine's going up every year because I'm eliminating a lot of lower, like two and 3,000 yeah. years. Well, I, I mean, the worst thing, the worst case is that you end up half of his. So, you know, that's not bad. You can take your own when you qualify and then switch to half of his when he qualifies, you know, right. so there's that. Um, okay. So the worst case, if we look at it right now, it's his thirty six fifty. You would get eighteen hundred. You know, half of his, and 
you know, now we're we're not bad. I mean, if you if you look at your sixty five hundred dollar a month expenses to have fifty four hundred, you got to the lion's share of that would come in from Social Security with a big butt, right? You know what the big butt is like. So if he works until age sixty two, then we have five years that yes. we have to actually finance. Yes. And that's not cheap. Tell me about his appetite for working longer or doing some part time. Like, how, how are you guys feeling about that? So I think we would both be OK with some part time to help, mm-hmm. you know, fund those years. But I don't want to do full time. I'm older than he is by about. Yes, you are. Half, damn it. About three and a half years. So okay. I, I like, <laughs> I'm, like- I'm, I'm going to take those three and a half years. I mean, uh, we have to make we have to spend. Let's just, I'm going to round it up. We're going to have to spend 80 grand a year, right? And so if if you think about that from, I'm going to go peg his age 62 because that's obviously the big, you know, he's the big earner. So can you guys save that 20? You say, I've got, hey, I think I got 20 grand a year that I can invest, right? That extra money. Can we take that 20 grand for seven years and put it away, not in cash necessarily, because we do have to actually have it work for you. That's the issue, right? So can we can we do that? Can we get that money moving? Can we get not all of your cash? Because I understand you probably are really freaked out. That's why you have so much cash. Yes. Um, could you swallow of your 350 or so in cash? Could you invest 200 of it? Oh boy. Yikes. I don't know. Mark, Mark, help her, <laughs> help her. 150. Wait, I'm, I'm negotiating against myself. How about, let's start with, let's say 150. Okay. Let's say 150. So Mark, if they had 150 grand invested in, in for the next uh, seven years, and then another 20 grand a year for seven years, right? How much can we expect that we have in this new exciting brokerage account for Lynn and her nonprofit bleeding heart husband, what would that grow to over the course of those seven years? Because again, everyone listening, what we're trying to do is fill a gap. It is a five-year gap. And we have to try to figure out how we're going to pull down $80,000 a year for those five years, which is, you know, like not insignificant, right? So Mark, do you think that they can do that if we invested 20 grand a year for seven years and put immediately put 150 grand to work? That'll get them about 400,000 in seven years. So it's pretty close, right? If you could do that, okay, and we now have exact. It's funny how the the symmetry works. That's eighty grand a year. Now the thing that we're not accounting for. This is all back of the envelope. We're not accounting for the fact that inflation is going to happen. So sixty five hundred dollars a month today will have to be. We're going to have to pull some money out from somewhere to actually bridge the gap because what's going to happen is sixty five hundred is going to turn into seven thousand or seventy five or eight thousand. So the good news is you have money saved. And so if we could essentially get you from 62 to his age 67, you put your money to work, you invest it, your other money grows. You're, you've got four, five, like you've got 520-ish thousand dollars. It looks good to me. And it's not a slam dunk. So as much as your husband's like, we're better than 80% of the people, and it's, it's irrelevant because you, if you had spent, if you spent $120,000 a year, I'd say you can't do this. But if you spent $40,000 a year, you'd be better than probably 95% of the people, which is you could retire at age 62 and support yourselves. You don't have that. The last thing that I can say about this is the longer you guys both work any way, shape or form, the better, right? Because then you're not pulling all that money down that 80 grand a year, you're not pulling it all down every year, right? You're saying, oh, I don't need 80 this year. I only need 40 because we both made 20 grand, you know, so that can really improve your odds. You know, I guess the other thing is you got a million dollars of real estate. Are you planning on keeping those pieces of real estate for retirement? So part of the time, yes, but then we figure 10 years in, we'll be selling one of them and using that money to fund our, you know, part of our retirement. Okay. Then I think you're in good shape. 
And the other thing to point out is that you guys are used to being in a higher tax bracket, I'm pretty sure. You know, especially you're probably used to being in, say, that 24% tax bracket. We so, were way, way higher right? than that. So yeah, yeah, it, may so be it even, is much lower now. Right. So now the good news also is that no money that you contribute should be in a pre-tax environment. It should only be Roth. Okay. And That's what we're doing. I've been listening to you. To right. My husband started yeah. his job. I said Roth. What I'm going to suggest to you is, have you ever really invested on your own besides retirement? Do you feel like you could or want to, or do you think you need some help? Um, I think I can do the the three buckets, the index funds that are stock yep. fund and international. So I think what you could do is you could move the Roth IRAs, right? Any pre-tax money that is sitting somewhere else that needs to be rolled over, you can move all of that and open a brokerage account somewhere where it's easy to invest in index funds. And so that would be, let me give you like your choices, that would be anything from Vanguard, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, which I think is being absorbed into Schwab, Mark, I'm not sure, T. Rowe Price, any of those places, you they'll help you consolidate the accounts and you'll invest. The big problem that you're going to have is that you kind of need a little nudge to get that cash to work. And if you think you need a little nudge, you may want to try um, the Vanguard Personal Service Advisor. It has a minimum of like, I think it's only 50 grand and they'll help automatically get that cash to work for you. They'll help you either do it in a lump sum or they'll say, okay, we'll take 10 grand a month out or, you know, or nine grand, three, three, three into three different index funds, whatever you decide. But it may be worth it for you to pay a little bit more for that personal service advisor just to give you a boost. And you know what? Your life is going to be uh, changing in the next 10 years. So maybe it is not a bad idea to have some advice along the way. What do you think of that? I think I could do that. I'm only learning from podcasts and books, and I just started at 50 to start learning all this. We didn't have any financial background at all. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Um, little, like, last little, um, you know, dotting of I's and crossing of T's. Do you guys have your estate documents completed? Yes, we do, actually, and we just went this week to update them. Oh, great. Fantastic. I think you're in good shape. Um, work. Keep working is good and it's good for him. And listen, he made the big change. He did the reset. He did his great money reset. So congratulations to both of you for pulling this off and getting to a place where you said, hey, he's working for a place I feel good about. I, I think it's great. I think you really are in good shape. And so if you have any other questions, we're here for you. But that's kind of my basic advice. You feel okay about it? I am. The only thing I'm still worried a little bit about is healthcare coming up as we get older and how we're going to fund that. You're going to pay for it until you get to age 65. So first of all, the kids are going to come off at age 26. They're done anyway. So they got to get their own. Maybe they're all going to get jobs and have their own health insurance. Then it's just you. And if the two of you, you're already paying 15 grand for health care, you know, you'll be used to paying it. And you'll either go on the marketplace or you'll wait to uh, get your your um, Medicare and, uh, you know, you'll make it work. But, you know, it's not like you're going to go paying, you're not going to pay zero to $100,000. You're already paying fifteen grand, and it'll be cheaper than that. It'll be, it'll be cheaper than that for you in the, in the future for one extra person. You'll get Medicare. You'll, when you're ready to apply for Medicare at 65, do it. And then we'll see where he is. You know, he may say, hey, you know what? I want to keep working. I like the health insurance. That could be good too. Thanks for relieving my mind. Uh, it's funny. We, we do latch on to those little things. I know I do that all the time. But what about this? And you're like, well, that's not actually the most important thing, but okay, I get why you're doing it. So Lynn, uh, encourage your husband to enjoy the job. He'll be doing it for at least seven and hopefully 10 more years. Okay, that's that. Thanks so much for joining us. If you, like Lynn, just want to walk through um, what, like the repercussions of a great money reset that you and your family may have taken, just give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and let us know if you would like to come on the air live with us. All of our great content lives on our website, jillonmoney.com, so check it out. Do me a favor. Lift someone up. Change your work. Change your wealth. Change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 